Here we go. Homer, Alaska. Here's an attempt to make a small sheet of paper feel as big as these mountains. I'm going to start with a sharpie because I'm trying to be more bold and also mistakes are totally fine. So if you make them, you may as well make them permanent. My trick is basically just making myself a coloring book that I'm going to watercolor in later. It is bold black lines, but I'm not painting a photograph, I'm painting a watercolor, so I'm okay with them. The outline doesn't have to be totally perfect, but once it's kind of detailed enough, especially those areas of texture, I dip into the water and it's time to start painting. With watercolors, I usually work light to dark, and that's because watercolors are something called subtractive, which means that there's only a finite amount of white on the page, and once it's gone, it's gone. You can't add anything else like oils. This does make things terrifying because mistakes seem a lot more costly, but it all works out in the end. As the sunny side of the mountains dry, I'm working on this sky, which is kind of a dark, stormy Homer sky, but it allows me to outline the edge of these kind of bright mountains. Now as that dries, I'm going to be working with some purple, I think. When it comes to colors, I really just I like the bright stuff, you know, it's not a photograph so I can really make it as bright and colorful as a world as I want. And colors don't really matter that much. What you're really looking for is those lights and darks, maybe even some warms and cools. But aside from that, like, the sky is the limit. Well, actually, I mean, the sky is totally limitless too. You could do whatever color you want. But as far as colors go, there's no right or wrong answer. Now as I get closer, I'm getting brighter and darker, and that's just because there's more air in the way, so things further away kind of become lighter and bluer. With these close mountains, I'm going to paint wet on wet with these really dark blues, and I'm just going to let it kind of flow into those wild textures. Right over here in the corner, I'm going to make a very small, massive ship. They are absolutely colossal, but compared to the mountains, they are just, they look like toy boats. If things weren't random enough, I'm just going to flick a little bit of splotches of paint just like this, just to kind of give that, that organic feel that the ocean really brings. And once those dry, just time for another coat on the boat, and then I think that probably should do it, bring the whole thing together. And there you have it. Catch a Mac Bay, a little boat, huge mountains. I mean, what more could you need? Well, maybe one more coat on the boat. But I think that's always the case, so maybe that goes without saying. And I just realized I forgot the bald eagle. Well, okay, that'll be its own painting later.